So thank you very much for uh, staying a week with us uh, over here. So uh, there will be prizes during this panel, I'm just telling you. So you have to wake up, questions are going to come in, and uh, the prize is uh, full Bitcoin. So, <laughs> so first of uh, you of course know me now by now. If you don't, please uh, check with the physician. So uh, let, let's hear from our panelists. Bobby. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Bobby Reynolds. I am a commercial real estate broker for um, Greystone Capital. I specialize in the GSA side on uh, VA federal um, assets um, with portfolios. Um, my interest in blockchain, a couple years ago, I worked with ITAS when I was in the military, um, previous military experience. As for the interest, kind of jumped and then started looking into blockchain and, and um, where they're going to cross between real estate and tokenization and title and and then got in touch with GBA, been there for a little while, and Gerard asked me to run the land title group, and here we, here we are. So that's it. Uh, Omar Boaishi, I, I, I work for uh, Gini May, which is uh, a corporation owned by the Departments of Housing and Urban Development. I'm a director for Emerging Technology and Innovation Lab. Uh, in terms of career, I have been uh, doing IT for the past 30 years, working for companies like IBM and Pricewaterhouse and Kaki. Uh, Pleasure being here. Thank you very much for your time. Bernie Allen. I am from Oracle. I lead what we call market development for advanced technologies. That's artificial intelligence, machine learning, high performance computing, blockchain, distributed ledger, and other such uh, technologies. And Adele invited me. Adele educated. And I also work for the team that can write checks for conferences. So, but. If you ask Prizes. in, in, in uh, the right time, right? So thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. So sorry. But uh, uh, to start with, uh, how many here in the audience live in a home? I see a couple of people did not raise their hands. Are you living in cardboard down the street? <laughs> All right. So uh, do you guys have a guess on like what's the size of the uh, housing market in the US? Like just give a guess, like how much is it? I have three trillion here. Who wants to delve in? Four trillion, okay. 20 trillion, who else? It's 2.2. It's actually around $45 trillion, that's how much. So Nilsson, you win, it is your Bitcoin. I told you, prizes. Yes. So, so <laughs> come see me afterwards. <laughs> so, so $45 trillion. A good friend of mine tells me that, you know, we all uh, live poor and die rich because all of our equity is tied into the real estate, the market uh, in it. So your house, you're living in it. It's very hard for you to monetize the house that you are living in while still continuing to living in. So what good does it make if you are living in a million dollar house while you have to live uh, paycheck to paycheck? So that's the first question that I wanna answer here. What kind of technologies, what do you see happening to monetize the value that you have in your house without having to go through the arduous process of uh, getting on your knees, applying for a loan, and they investigate everything including cavity search or something like that? So to, clarif to clarify, so you're wondering what kind of technologies to give value to what you own, yes. to your assets. So speaking of land title, I think that's probably one of our biggest questions is ownership, right? Like who owns it? How do you prove that? So you can't really give it value if you don't know who the right owner is. So I think in our working group, that's something that we're working on right now is, um, is uh, taking asset evaluation, um, ownership, all of those things and trying to figure out from s point A to point Z, where do we start? So. Um, technology right now for specific real estate is you're looking at your, your governance, is your municipality is looking for um, city, county, state, those levels to find out where it began. You have your chain of ownership, you gotta make sure that it's not broken. Um, how do we find that first? So we've been in the working group for a couple months now and um, that's kind of the framework for the BMM that we're filtering through right now. So um, that is a good question and we're working that one out, so yes. So you are saying blockchain to record all your uh, deeds, right? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. We're we're looking at, but we have to have that proper, you know, um, chain of ownership, and that's the 
that right now is even especially globally because we got rural areas that don't even have that in city and counties and other countries they don't even have it in the government so um, that's what we're working on right now so great so Omar you work for like a semi-government entity no no it's a government uh, I'm a civil servant and for me uh, the worst case is really for the folks that don't have access to housing and the underserved uh, for us, it's been proven that housing in the U.S. is a way to generate wealth. I mean, some of us do have equity, and we have access to that equity, and some don't. They don't have equity. They don't know what equity means. And for us in the government and uh, the Department of Housing have that on their radar. So for us, we are looking at programs, and we are looking at system to support those programs. I mean, the, in the initiative can come from our leadership, can come from any administration, Republican or Democrat, but for us it's, can we support those initiatives with the technology we have? It is old, some of our systems are old, we modernized, we brought uh, our technology up to par now, but there is more to do. And for us we're looking at emerging technologies such as blockchain, smart contracts, and other emerging technology, AI is also in, in the list, to make sure that the programs are flexible, and then we did is focus on the underserved. There is technology that allow small shops that are focusing on this underserved population to have access to systems that are sophisticated without them making the investment. So there is things we are doing to alleviate this, this burden and this pain, and uh, we are hoping that blockchain can, 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 can be a value add uh, I am working on use cases to prove that this technology is worth investing. We cannot be the pioneer government agencies, I mean, especially with my agency, we cannot be the pioneer in adapting technology. We wanna see how it's proven. And what we have uh, assessed is we need to build this ecosystem first. You cannot deploy uh, blockchain in isolation. You have to have those, those partners that are educated, that we have the buy-in to deploy this technology and there is definitely uh, an evidence that this technology, if we invest taxpayers' money on it, can bring us the value. And one of the value is exact, exact, exactly what you say, Adil, is can we access the, our equity? Can we have mechanism to access our equity if needed quickly, not when you don't need it anymore? So those are all programs that we have on the radar, and we are hoping with the technology and the innovation that it brings and with good partners, we can we can establish a good foundation for it. Good question, thank you. Uh, before I get to the technology thing, which is my day job, right? But the um, I want to say that my wife and I started investing in single-family distressed real estate in 2006. So we would buy foreclosures, we buy you know defaults. We got good at it, and thank God we got good at it by 2008, right? because you already had the practice, now you had the opportunity, you can go execute. So I appreciate the question. That we have to, as a culture, value liquidity as much as we value equity, right? Because liquidity keeps you happy every day, right? And I'm not talking about happy hour, right? But I'm also saying, you know, liquidity is what you need. Liquidity you need every day, right? I often think about equity as a mirage. It's out there, it's there, it's value, it's your property value, it's there, it's there, it's never there. One day you're dead and you see an estate sale sign, right? So we, as a culture, I think we should value, value liquidity, which then gets into technology because what we can enable better is for the liquidity side with advanced technologies. The number one advice I've given, I'm giving companies is, Start respecting your documents again, right? Do you remember, I mean, since databases were created and structured data, there's so much of the last few decades have been about structured data and how much structured data. In the last few months, we don't care about structured data. We are all chasing documents, <coughs> right? We are all saying, let's go back to how things were. Because you think about, let's say a real estate document, a closing document, you go to the closing table, that's when you look at a thick stack of documents. You never realized there were so many numbers, right? Structured data ca captured a tiny portion of any transaction. 
Think about it another way. All of the structured data stuff, the more recent the data is, the more correct it is. If you go back in time, six years, seven years, right? How correct is that data? If some IT team tells you, oh, my data is always correct, ask them how many validation rules have they added in the last three years? What happened to all the data that was entered before those rules were added? How valid is that data? But the documents go back 10 years, 20 years, 100 years, the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence. Those documents are correct. Now we have the technology to go back in time and recreate data and recreate data in a correct form, much more correctly, from the documents. So the first input I give companies is start treating your documents with respect. Don't just think about it as record keeping, therefore I need to keep it for seven years and then trash it. There's immense value in those documents. Don't be thinking about storage cost of documents and what is the cheapest archival storage or NAS that you can find out there. That's not the correct question to ask. That document has rich information that technology can then use to create systems like liquidity systems, right, that we can go. We need to raise, I would say that we need to shoot for going to Alpha Centauri, right? How are we gonna do that if we don't change our, our economy completely? So, for instance, there was a slide which says that Bill Gates is saying, how are we gonna, it's not that we're gonna lose jobs, but what are we gonna do about it? I think correctly our, currently our economy is defi defined by jobs and labor and work, people converting their time to money. But the most successful people are people who have realized how to disconnect their time from their money. If we decentralize that, if we are able to give everybody that kind of access, like if I'm contributing my data to some social media platform and I then get paid for it, right? And the more and more systems we create where my money is disconnected from my time, then what does my time go to? Solving the problems that takes us to Alpha Centauri, right? Chasing purpose. That's what the people who are accomplished do. They disconnect their time from their money and spend their time on purpose. We need, to ex we need to allow an entire population to be able to do that. That's why I think liquidity matters and getting liquidity in a decentralized system into the hands of people so that they can start applying their intellect to not their day job. That's why I didn't start my answer with my day job to what I really care about, right? And that's what we need to do. I just have one comment. I don't have to disconnect my time from my money. I have my kids disconnecting my money already. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, one of uh, the people that I really admire, Albert Einstein, says that uh, the repeating the same thing, expecting different results, is the definition of insanity. So. To, to y'all's point around like how do we move forward and how we grow from, from here. There are different uh, solutions on uh, the real estate market. Some are trying to tokenize the one single property. Some are trying to uh, uh, sell a property as an NFT. Some are selling the appreciation right of that property. Uh, in your own experience, what do you think the direction uh, uh, for blockchain and unlocking the potential uh, uh, value of the property would be? I think moving forward, uh, it honestly, is from my opinion, is smart contract packaging. So I've had a lot of coworkers, and actually even today I had a discussion with somebody about um, losing jobs to AI, things like that, and land title, and real estate agents, stuff like that. Those are all legitimate concerns. But I think if we keep that in the forefront, um, and, and take a look at how we could maybe incorporate um, title uh, agents and package smart contract packaging, all of those things, using tokenization to help people that can't have access to $100,000 of um, liquidity. You know, tokenization is definitely a solution to that. Um, I think those are a couple of things that I see moving forward. I don't think those are going away as of dealing with digital twins and a lot of companies coming forward with tokenization. All of those things are going to keep moving forward. So. I think we get ahead of that, we figure out what those pieces look like, make sure that it falls within uh, legal realm, it hits all economic statuses of everybody. Um, everybody can have the reach for that, like two of you were talking about, that's really important. And making it broad enough where it's not just the US, it's global. Sweet, so Omar, from a governmental point of view, what would be the markings of a system that's like, yes, 
that would be a system that we would accept in uh, the government. Uh, for us in the U.S., our system, our housing system works. I mean, it, and the reason why it works is because investors trust it and they invest in it. So Jenny may attract funds from overseas. So we don't have to prove the worth of our system. Uh, it's some, some, some of it is, uh, is, is old and, you know, there is a lot of data uh, discrepancy that we face. But for us, uh, there is more to do. And uh, we are looking at... Uh, the new economy is very competitive. There is a lot of players out there, and we cannot be behind. So, and we cannot afford to be behind. To support our citizen, we need to be in the forefront, we need to be the best, and we need to increase the trust in our uh, system. Now, what do I mean by trust? The trust means we need to show transparency to our investors, national, international, and to our players in the ecosystem, we have to have a transparent system that everybody can see the data and the truth about this data. So that's number one. And then competency. And competency, it's really the f it proven to, the, to all the players out there that the management of that data that support that investment is in good hands and, in good, you, and we're using good technology. And for us, we are looking at uh, what China is doing, what other uh, European countries are doing, and blockchain is at the forefront. So we cannot sit back and just wait. We have to take, you know, uh, we have to do our due diligence. And our due diligence is what Jenny May is doing for a portion of the work. I mean, there is other government agencies are doing their due diligence, but for Jenny May through the Innovation Lab, we have conducted a few POCs to assess blockchain, and we have assessed three technology but we're not, we not in production mode yet. I mean, there is still things to do. As I said, the first thing is establish the ecosystem. We, uh, you know, we don't disturb the market. We cannot disturb the market. We cannot you know, wreck the housing system that everybody trusts. So if we deploy it, it has to be done in a very good manner. Uh, we mitigate the risk. We ensure that all the participants have the buy-in and our data uh, becomes valuable and also to show that flexibility in acquiring housing, especially for the young generation. The young generation, they are technology savvy. They, they are not like some of us in the 80s or 70s. They really want uh, uh, something that is uh, quick and, and uh, you know, access to their data is manageable. So there is this system that we need to create and there is this economy participation, we need to position ourselves. And we're working on that. I think it's, uh, and also I, I wanna bring in this uh, Mortgage Banker Association that we work with. And there is a MISMO standard that uh, Eric Lapin mentioned. And also the participation of partners like uh, Eric Lapin's organization that is bringing us this good concept that we don't have to build. I don't believe that the government should be building system. We should adapt system. We should make sure that we are good tax, uh, steward of taxpayers' money. We cannot be throwing money to build systems left and right. If there is a solution out there that can provide value to uh, the housing sector, I'm the first to bring it, introduce it, and sell it to our leadership. So these are the things we are doing. So we're hoping that we are creating a new system of housing, a system that is based on good technology, blockchains or other, but definitely we are working towards that. Fantastic. So, Bernie, technology is your uh, game. So, in the last two minutes, can you tee us up? So, why are we able to do these things today, even though the algorithms and the mathematics has existed forever, right? It's because the infrastructure, finally, right? And that comes from just phys physics, right? Miniaturization, nanotech, where the the communication within the integrated circuit, the chip, is much faster. Sampling is faster. We can do more cycles, right? Therefore, more compute. Therefore, massive amounts of data. Therefore, these algorithms can finally have a life and run, right? So whatever we can do with high-performance computing today, right, is allowing us to do all of these large documents, et cetera. But there is so much research going on in quantum. 
and just think about what the next ability set is going to be or everything that we're going to be able to do. Right? And the more we are going to be do these things, we need to make sure that all the gains of that doesn't go back to, again, seven people on the planet. Right? And that's where I think decentralizing and having true blockchain so solutions participate. Because right? if we think about the history and we're talking about real estate, and I'm very hopeful about real estate because real estate is real and it, has, it provides value. I know that a lot of people don't have that equity, but a lot of people do have that equity. Right? That $44 trillion that Adele was talking about, right? Ha have that. And that has the ability to create that new, new economy. Right? But if you think about increasing participation, 50 years ago, 60 years ago, only if you had the money you could buy the house. Then there were mortgages. Mortgages were such a huge equalizer, decentralizer. Right? The more people can participate. And then it became mortgage-backed securities, which means we were able to turn things around. And that was liquidity, but it also required the technology to provide that, provide that liquidity. Right? When we do the next time around, think about it doing it on a decentralized manner, where there is so much distribution and so, so much participation. Right? So that's where I think the technology can help, because the infrastructure for piece of it, which is what my day job is at Oracle Cloud, that's what we solve. We are doing a better job every day, and we are going to keep doing a better job every day. Right? So we will have more that we put out so that more things can be solved. Right? But I think doing it in a decentralized manner, in a distributed ledger manner, is the one profound way I think we should do it differently next time around. I completely agree with Bernie that all the money should not go to oh, like seven people in this planet. It should go to seven people plus me. <laughs> <laughs> so in the last the two minutes, we have time for one question. Yes, pick one, anyone. Hi, um, our agency performs annual assessments of real property valuation across the state of Maryland. And we've been looking at ways for, to leverage blockchain and open standards and distributed ledgers. It seems like assessments could be an additional component to a um, land management chain. Um, and so I guess my question would be, have you seen anyone trying to do that? Or what do you think of the concept? That's a great question. Anybody wants to answer, take the time? Like assessments? You're talking about the appraisal or the, the, the appraisal? So LA County, Los Angeles County, um, look at what they did, and I can send you information about what they did. They have taken a lot of doc documents, created large models with it, and have automated and built the structured data to create automated uh, assessments of single family homes. Right, so I can share what they did uh, with you. Uh, we have 40 seconds. One more 40 question. seconds, do it. I, I, do, I do recommend you guys connecting with the MISMO. They have community of practices that are specific to those questions. So it's MBA, Mortgage Banker Association, and the standard is called MISMO, and they have community of practices that deals with that questions. One more question back there. Here. Uh, my question is, when do you actually see America actually deploying these concepts, right? And uh, what needs to be done for that to be? Or uh, yeah. Uh, there is a couple companies right now that are working on syndicating for you know projects that are tokenization you know tokenization twenty percent, um, sometimes the entire project. So there is companies out there that are trying to get the word out to communities. Doing you know I think marketing is and just educating people that there is availability out there that there are companies doing that. I think one of the biggest gaps that we have between where we are now and where we're going is in this room and the people that we all talk to or understand blockchain or those, um, it's easy to, to talk about that, but when we're talking about like, people don't have access to that, or even the people, or even the people that do not have the liquidity, there's a huge gap. You know, a lot of times I'll be talking to somebody even now where they're not exactly sure what blockchain is. So um, the people that we really need to be figuring out how we're gonna market that to are ones that don't have that access, and that piece is something I'm passionate about too because there are companies out there that are doing that, um, tokenizing, and they're doing it from the, the smallest buy-in from $1,000 to you know, over 40 million. So there's a lot of different projects that are happening. 
So that's hopeful. And I just think the education piece is the one that we need to smooth out um, to people. Yeah, we are, uh, uh, just for you're for done. For I'm done looking at uh, just for uh, for your question, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. You might want to check if they have something on the horizon. For us, uh, it has to be some uh, uh, initiative that is supported by the government. So the leadership, the political appointee, needs to bring it and say this is something that we need to do, and and that's how we we get started doing it. But so far, we are we are doing tokenization prototyping. And this is something I am doing for the, at the innovation lab, so it's a bit early to to productionalize it. So hope that helps. Perfect. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.